This time of year is a really special time. We believe that there is the thinnest layer between our world and the afterlife, and so that our loved ones can come back and forth and say hello to us. We're here in Phoenix on the Day of the Dead. Each of these chairs represents 100 people in Arizona who have died of COVID. This election has been defined by a pandemic, and the families of the victims are here to put names and faces to the death toll. Who are you here for tonight? I'm here for my father, Santos Gomez. When I lost him, it's like I feel everybody's pain. I understand everybody's pain. Well, I'm here for my baby sister. She was just like special to everybody. I never got to see her at the end. You know, I feel very bad that she was so alone by herself. I found myself lucky because I knew how many Americans didn't get to spend those last hours with their loved ones. I lost my father on August 7th. I would just like the world to know that my father was not a number. He was an amazing man. He was very loved and he's very missed. Uh, my dad's right below me, Mark Urquiza. He was 65 years old, no known pre-existing conditions. He was also a beloved part of the West Valley community. Kristen Urquiza lost her father to COVID on June 30th. She drew national attention after she publicly blamed President Trump for her father's death. My dad was a healthy 65-year-old. His only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump and for that, he paid with his life. We met up with her in Arizona in the final days before the election. What kind of relationship did you have with your dad? Politically speaking, we did not agree on anything. <laughs> so that's where the complications came. You know, my dad went along with the Trump nomination and ended up being, I think, kind of excited about him because he brought in a fresh perspective. With the encouragement of President Trump, Arizona's Republican governor reopened the state in mid-May to revive its economy. We are supposed to, in times of crisis in particular, follow the advice of people in charge. And my dad trusted these folks. So he did end up going out and seeing people. Yeah, so he, you know, his favorite thing in the world to do was karaoke. So he went and met up for a karaoke night, and within a couple of weeks, he woke up on June 11th with a fever and a cough and, you know, other COVID symptoms. And that began our 19-day uh, journey with my dad being sick with COVID and eventually dying. What was the last conversation you had with your dad? There was a long silence, and he took a big sigh, and he said, I feel sideswiped. I paused and I asked him, do you feel betrayed? And there was a long pause again. And he said, yes. COVID death is undignified. It is lonely. Nobody deserves that. After her father's death, Urquiza founded a national organization to mobilize other bereaved families and vote out the leaders they hold responsible for the deaths of their loved ones. The reason I'm standing before you is because my dad died from COVID and I decided to speak up and say he should not have died. And it is because of the politicians who continue to jeopardize brown, black and indigenous people when it comes to downplaying the virus and making sure that we don't have what we need in order to protect ourselves and our communities. How does it feel to be grieving so publicly in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of an election? I didn't feel like I had a choice other than to raise my voice. And the thing that I know that we need is a coordinated, data-driven national response to this pandemic. That will never come from Donald Trump. The U.S. has now passed 230,000 COVID deaths. And in many ways, this election is a referendum on President Trump's management of the crisis. Hey, how's it going? Urquiza has taken a leave of absence from her job to focus on getting out the vote for Joe Biden in Arizona, which is a crucial swing state this year. So Kristen helped organize this event today. It's called Low Riding for Biden, and it's kind of the left's answer to the pro-Trump caravans we've seen throughout this election. The next 48 hours, it is imperative that we make sure every single ballot makes it to the ballot drop box. How are you feeling? 
I'm feeling rejuvenated and energized and exhausted and a lot of feelings all at the same time. Exactly one year ago today was the last time I saw my dad alive. It was in Arizona for Dia de los Muertos. And we had an altar with pictures of our loved ones who have passed. And there's an altar here today and my dad is on that altar. I mean, that's just one year in Trump's America. It's heavy. Our lives are important. And if we're not fighting for our communities, what are we fighting for?